Okay. All right. Uh, almost ready to get going here. I was going to try to play some music, but I'm having trouble. We just moved into a new apartment here, so trying to get the internet working well. Um, anyways, nonetheless, Dakota, how's it going over there in Invark, man? What are you guys up to? It seems like it's, uh, I, oh, I see so <laughs> much just from the, your community and uh, what you guys are building. Uh, there's a lot of hype over there, man. Um, and the thing is, it seems like you guys are doing something different every week. You guys are really putting some fire out there. Oh, thank you. Um, I guess, uh, I mean, well, first and foremost, we've just been, we've been really busy. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um, I think it was like a month ago. Uh, we always have our meetings in VR and I hopped in, looked at everyone and I, I just pumped them up and let them know like, hey, these next couple of weeks especially are going to be very, very busy. You know, I want it like everyone at 110 percent doing everything that we wanted to deliver on everything that we're, we're still we're still building out now. Um, but the big thing I, I'd say is uh, that, that helps. Um, cause we, we, we do. We have a lot going on. Um, we got Udall Dow um, with the Dow CDK working on Get Arch. We just had our LVP. Um, now we're looking at the future with uh, liquidity mining rewards on match list and then staking and rolling that out. Um, so it's a lot of things. And ironically, like fun fact, um, we are we're one of the smaller teams, that's for sure. But we're also, um, except for Inview, shout out to Inview. They are completely, like completely no private funding whatsoever. But sec- apart from Inview, we are the, I think we're the least funded project. Uh, not to say like that, not to, not anything to do with, uh, I would say, our abilities. I like to think we've proven that so far. Um, more so, we just, I don't know, man, close to $2 million was a lot of money when we raised it. So, like, I don't know where people spend all their money so fast. <laughs> but uh, so we've just been building, been doing our thing. Um, but we're excited. That, that's the thing. For like a whole year, um, especially for Gabe and I, you know, we were just talking about this. Uh, it was almost like in theory, you know, we're, we're talking about all the things that will be possible, all the things that we would like to see. And now here we are a year later and we have this network and we can stop talking about them in, in like this hypothetical wishful thinking sense. And we can actually just get to building them. And I think it's, it's like cooking, you know, and if for anyone in here who's into cooking, you know, you put a lot of time and effort in something, you, you look really forward to, oh, man, how's this going to taste, you know? And, and in the end, you're really proud of that, hopefully. Um, and it's very similar. Like we're able to build and as we're just seeing the progress of that, and I'll be honest, the community support has been phenomenal, like absolutely incredible. Thank you to everyone. I mean, it's, it means a lot. It means a lot to me as an individual. Like, I get like a little like sappy here, but like I literally, I don't have family. I come from foster care. Like I don't have few friends because I'm just a busybody. You know what I mean? Like, so like, yeah, man. my <laughs> my validation that like as a human being, like where do I get that from? I don't see mm-hmm. it, but like I get it from the community, and it just lets me know, reminds me, reminds the whole team that like what we're building matters. And I think what a lot of us like want more than anything is we want purpose we want to make a difference and going along this journey and making progress and seeing the support as we're you know as we're delivering on this progress just it means a lot i'm really grateful for it and uh it goes a really long way no, yeah that coconut definitely. family i yeah, love it there's nothing like it i i definitely am excited to get into some of those details with the community and how they uh, you know how that's been unique to come around and support you guys, um, especially you know in the bear market when it's hard enough to get people's attention on you know a lot of these different kinds of projects. Uh, that is very very exciting to hear, like a very underrated but pretty pretty awesome thing to hear. So yeah, um, so let me go let me go ahead and get the introductions out of the way, and then we can get started. Uh, so hi everyone, my name is Enrique. I'm the content marketing director here at uh, Remark, and we have our moderator here is Lim uh, here on his uh, credit card scissors. Yes, that is Lamb. He's a he is the our main figurehead for all of our remark videos that we do over at the Remark YouTube channel. So uh, make sure to check that and check us out there and see what we're doing. And then we have Dakota here from Envark. And man, they have so many things going on: Tinkernet, Udo Dow, uh, NFT DAOs. You guys just uh, you guys just have so much going on. Um, so we're interested to get everything going. We're, we're glad you're here and we can't get to, we can't wait to, to dig deep into some of these brain busting concepts that you guys have. Uh, so here, lead us away, Lynn. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Um, so, uh, like, like, uh, Enrique said, guys, uh, I'm Lem, credit card scissors, uh, the remark team and Alpha Airdrop team. 
Uh, we're excited to have uh, Dakota from Inbarch uh, today. So, uh, Dakota, uh, we uh, you know we definitely had the pleasure of getting to actually uh, not only learn more about the project, but actually meet with you and hang out with you in uh, in NYC um, at uh, at Decoded. Um, and that was an absolute pleasure, and it was great to uh, kind of see you know people in the community, uh, but also see you're all real dudes, real people uh, with the real heart for this stuff. Hang and out it goes very that. like one of the, honestly that whole event and hanging out with you guys best one of the best moments of my whole life. You guys are. Really <laughs> I, I it, was, it was definitely very uh, very welcoming and uh, very very cool on a lot of different levels for sure. So definitely makes uh, me very excited for the interview today. Um, I I definitely wanted you to kind of uh, like I share with the audience just generally like starting off like what is Envarch but like how did it start because I thought that story that you shared with us like yeah this is. It's how it all came to, together. Like, first of all, it's a huge idea and huge concept, but how fast it came together and just the backstory, I thought was really fascinating. If you could share some of that to start. Yeah. Um, so some people may, may know already, but uh, it actually, like, the building started a year ago, but the idea for Invarch started five, going to be going on six years uh, here soon, but uh, five years ago. Um, and it had nothing to do, originally had nothing to do with blockchain and nothing to do with, I didn't even know what those things were. Um, I just, I had a friend and he shared, he just had this idea, you know, you're with friends and you're talking about, um, I don't know, just cool ideas for stuff. And he was doing that about this car, renewable energy based car. And it, it made a lot of sense. Logically, I said, you should make it. And he laughed. You know, we were extraordinarily poor um, individuals and I think we were just like 20 at the time. So, um, yeah, no money, no resources, nothing like that. It's just good ideas. And I realized that unfortunately, um, most of the time having these good ideas, it doesn't really, uh, it doesn't really, doesn't do much. Um, and half the time, those ideas kind of just end right there. That's it. Uh, there's this, I, I noticed a massive disconnect between individuals who have great ideas and people who have the means to, to bring them to life. Uh, and so how it all started, the very, very first thing of it all was I just, I wanted to make an app. Um, the idea was for like a social network app that allowed people like allowed creators and, and you know, innovators to, to get together people to basically offer up, like, I have an idea, here's a, a share of ownership, you know, that you get and we build it together. And, you know, that, that was the idea I had. I just wanted, I wanted to bring all these people together. And then you could even like, you could have, whether it's community or VCs, people, you know, that want to support or invest or donate, whatever, like give them access to help fuel developments. And, and it was a raw idea, but. In, in an instant, I just saw that in my brain. And I was like, I, I want to build this. Um, and the problem is that in the Web2 world, it's not that you couldn't build something like this, but I will say I came to the conclusion um, that, like, and again, unaware of decentralization and Web3 and all these things, I realized that if this, if this you know company had launched this, one, there's a lot of, it's a lot of responsibility. Um, there's a lot of control over like the individuals like the, that data um but also i i feared that uh this might sound a little odd but uh but just like doing the math on like because like a business model it was like you know if you took just like one percent of all these things you know it's like hey you have like redfin for home sales they just take one percent but the same idea but for like you know innovators connect to them and off their ip boom one percent but that business would possibly if successful it could accumulate like billions, if not trillions of dollars. And I thought that that was just, that's a, that's a lot. Um, and there was also problems such as like, how do you protect an idea? Um, how do you allow people to communicate, to share their IP? And then after it's been shared, protect someone from going out and then just for lack of a better term, stealing it. Um, and those were questions I don't think that Web2 was prepared to solve. Um, I don't think it's equipped to solve. However, when I, I never gave up on the idea, though, like for five years, like whether it's on paper in my head or a lot of stuff is on paper and typing it up, just plans of how everything should work. Um, but then I eventually found Polkadot. Um, Polkadot was the first token like, I ever purchased. And I, I didn't I didn't get into the space necessarily attracted by like the numbers uh, of the finances of things. Um, I got in pre bull last bull run. And I got in because of Polkadot. Um, I read the Polkadot paper, read the Tenement paper. Um, 
I did not read the Ethereum white paper, but I did look over it heavily. Um, and I went through like all the different um, tech stacks and solutions out there. And for one, I came to the conclusion that Polkadot's like unparalleled. But when I discovered blockchain, it's, it was like all of the puzzle pieces that had been missing, like tracking ownership, verifiability, okay. extending derivative work. Like those things just, it wasn't possible before, but in a moment, boom, yeah, suddenly. It, it, yeah, add in all of these things, and and it's the it's it's going off from like obviously we're not working on a social network right now. Um, we're working mm-hmm. on a network on which someone could build that type of, of network, or someone could build something like Git Arch, or you have mm-hmm. there's music apps or collaboration apps or um, even authorships, like basically yeah. anything that has to do with ownership, collaboration. I heavily recommend that if you want to build the most fluid and lucrative dap as possible you know, build on top of Invarch. yeah um, and, and and it all started because i we didn't look at it as like oh yeah this network is needed here mm-hmm. it, it came out more so as like man really want to build this and it's not possible so let's make it possible yeah i i definitely i i find it pretty fascinating that that i i think in terms of the technology progression like web 2 we have like a lot of shared connectivity and information right and more ideas that can be shared uh, then, you know, then I'd probably say, you know, in human history, just think, thankfully because of technology, but there's no good tools to protect those ideas, right? So we have more sharing of ideas and more ways to connect, like with creators um, and to get those ideas out there, but no ways to protect them. And I guess with blockchain, then it, if you could like uh, kind of differentiate for our audience, like, so for, so for a lot of people's understanding of blockchain, that is, it is ownership, right? Digital ownership. Like how does Invarch uh, in IP protection uh, or uh, like, how does that uh, like differ from like, hey, just hey, I have an NFT collection of ideas or blockchain. How does that? Why is Invarch needed more than than I guess what we have at a the, our regular framework now? So there's a few reasons. Um, and I'll kind of scale them up from simple to lucrative, I guess you could say. Um, so first and foremost, um, the the main pain point here immediately right now in the world is um, there's necessarily clarity. There's a lot of uh, confusion um so when people buy nft collections for one like how is this license do i own the ip rights do i not own the ip rights 99 percent of the time none of that information is included in the asset it's metadata nothing like that there's no nothing linking to a license so for you to know this you would have to independently go out of your way and you know figure that out um which is i'll just say user experience wise it's a bit annoying but it, it exposes people to risk unintentionally you know um as we saw with NFTs, like, and it's just human nature for people to take an inch and what, what is it? They run a foot or whatever the, however the saying goes, um, you give them an inch, they run a mile, but, uh, people see, you know, Oh, NFT selling. And then people just see derivatives. And then for a large body of people, there was just this assumption that NFT equals, I own this, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I can do anything I want with this is mine. And mm-hmm. the reason for this confusion is because, Let's say, so you have like, at first, it's different now, but a year ago, you had like CryptoPunks, you had Bored Apes. CryptoPunks, you could not do that. You did not own the full IP rights to it. But your Bored Ape, you do now. Uh, But your Bored Ape, you could go nuts. And you saw like how that blew up. One collection blew up because it was, it was kind of, even though CryptoKitties, there's even something before it technically was older, but CryptoPunks blew up as like, you know, that old. This is the OG collection, you know, um, whereas board apes blew up because of there was apart from the popularity, there was a lucrativeness behind it. You could actually do things with this if you wanted. But back to my point, just lack of clarity. So in a very simple note, including like what the actual rights are and attached to an asset, it just it helps a lot. But and like that would be like a big step up from where we are today, you know, but there's we can do so much more than just replicate or emulate the the standards and procedures that we're used to today we mm-hmm. can we can make sure that we are providing a system to where like i'd say like v1 like yeah people can barely it's, it's there it's attached they know what the copyrights are um but i will say it doesn't it doesn't guarantee that those are followed uh, yes. i think one like of the, in- the funniest things in, 
Good. Yeah, yeah. Or uh, if if I could just kind of park just a second on the 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 board ape Yuga Lab and CryptoPunks uh, example. Is it true that I guess so for CryptoPunks, then you don't necessarily own all the copyrights, but supposedly but with board you, ape, or, you, or you now didn't. you do. Yeah, yeah, you didn't. Okay, but now board apes, uh, like if you own one, you you technically can replicate it on. Uh, like you, you have copyright ownership where you could uh, replicate it like on a T-shirt or a mug or sell those rights to like some other brands or something like that. And like legally, like that's the legal framework, I guess, in the regular, uh, I guess, legal framework for it. But the difference yeah. is like, imagine if, uh, so in today's world, I, I like to use this example. I could go and buy a pack of Pokemon cards or do cards, mm -hmm. whatever, you know, but um, you go buy a pack of Pokemon cards. And you, whatever you draw, I mean, like, it's cool, but what you mm -hmm. can't do is, like, you draw a Charizard, and you're like, cool, you can't start making Charizard t-shirts and selling them, because, yeah. like, if you're doing well, at least. Eventually, Nintendo's going to be like, hey, bud, you got to cease and desist, or you you could just get sued, you know. Um, however, uh, minus mm -hmm. the surprise of what's inside the pack, when someone would purchase that board eight. Um, it, it, yeah, then they have the ability for that board ape, and things can get a little tricky, like, because yeah. people have, there's a misunderstanding between, like, style and copyright, like, style is not something that's, it's, that'd be a slippery slope, mm -hmm. um, yeah. however, there's, like, obviously there's, there's the specifics, like, how that ape, how their board ape looks, yeah, that he can, they can go nuts, um, I haven't heard of, like, what happens if someone were, if someone were to alter it, mm -hmm. of course, I believe they have full rights. If they were to alter it, as long as it doesn't infringe on a pre-existing one, I'm pretty sure, mm -hmm. then that would be fair game. Um, yeah. But you're still having to trust Yuga Labs to some extent, right? Like, that they're not going to, like, change that legal framework down the road. Or I, that's I don't – I think with them, I think – I'm pretty sure users are – they're good. Um, they are, okay. Are good. Like, they're not – like, <clears throat> no, like, the IP rights aren't part of the asset, I will say that. But um, – Yuga Labs has publicly made like it's there's been enough public statements yeah. to where if they ever were to revert, mm -hmm. it would instant legal headache and then they'd lose, you know. Yeah. Um, so so, they, so that, they would know better. Yeah. So in terms of though that if, if people wanted that extra layer of protection with Invarch, then what would that look like? Hey, I'm a board ape. Uh, if hypothetically I'm a board ape owner, I want, uh, you know, I want to use Invarch. What would that look like? So if you're looking, so with Invarch, what you're able to get is kind of like this. You can remove the trust out of the app, uh, out of everything. Okay. Gotcha. And it can be really powerful for the creators, for the holders, you know what I mean, as well. But so you have, let's, I'll use code as an example. Okay. Um, actually, I'll use this. I'll use Remark. Um, Remark Smart Contracts as an example. Mm -hmm. So so imagine, because NFTs can be a lot more than art. So like imagine this uh, as a repository that stored on GitArch. And it has one of our smart licenses, which will be coming in the future. Um, so, typically in today's world, if something is open source, um, then, which is good. You know, but people can take it and they can go nuts. And ironically, this is true, someone, you could make the most incredible um, open source code, most incredible code in the world. It's open source. Mm -hmm. And technically speaking, the whole world could use it and you could you could be the poorest person on the planet. You know what I mean? Because you, you didn't do it for the money, granted, you know. Um, but there's this irony here because a lot of time goes into these things. Um, but imagine if, say this, so imagine if you could have it to where it's open source all the same, go nuts, and it's all the same, like no one's making money, all good, all fine. However, if you do implement this and it builds near that, then you know, whatever percent, it could be 0 0.05, 0 0.0025, whatever, it could be higher than that, it could be a whole percent, 10%, it doesn't matter. But what if you could then have it so royalties accumulated over that DAP are automatically streamlined to the owner or owners of, or core owners of that, uh, the remark repository. Interesting. Okay. So then... As an open source, you know, build this. And again, someone wants to build it for whatever they make. No, it's all good. It's all fine. You know what I mean? It's not it's like mm -hmm. it's not saying it's in today's world. It's either it's completely free for everyone or you must pay. What we're saying is now we can have both and you can yeah. differentiate them to the mm -hmm. same asset. You can even make it to where some people can have customizable rights. Like some people can have full on use rights. Go nuts. Some people can have it to where there is this agreement to where like, yes, there's a stream of royalties. 
yeah. you can have it to where someone has full on, you can fork it, go nuts, make a change. And then that's your whole thing. You don't need to give yeah. us nothing. Like the, yeah. the, whatever you can think of hypothetically, you yeah. can create a rule set that a, a unique rule set for each individual party um, mm-hmm. over your single asset. Yeah. That nuance is really interesting uh, because uh, like you said, like the, the dichotomy of choices, like it, there's not a lot of choices. It's kind of feast or famine. Uh, yeah. To some extent, uh, for you know, the, in our present infrastructure, did you did you hear recently about the the controversy with Magic Eden? I think this was like literally just last week. I've where... been hearing about it. Like they got rid of. Could you, you go ahead. You just... Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, I think you're going to mention that you're basically making royalties optional for creators. <laughs> and I remember listening to uh, their space last week, and somebody was coming on and like, well, okay, so is Magic Eden? Are they going to make their fees, you know, optional necessarily? And basically, creators are getting screwed. Um, that you know decide to build on that on that platform. Obviously, you have options technically, right? With competition, if someone wants mm-hmm. to come and build another marketplace, but still, that's that's still not a lot of options at the end of the day, right? Like, yep. that, so that nuance of, of of protection of those, you know, the different variations, I think, actually could be really powerful and something they're definitely key in for creators, wouldn't you say? I agree. Uh, I'll say so. It's important, but I will say, like in the case of Magic Eden, like. So I feel like Magic Eden really does view NFTs and not it's it's not a bad thing, but when they think of NFTs, they they're thinking art, you know, like they yeah. I really do like they're not yeah utility, but I think they see utility more as a buzzword um, yeah. okay. than anything. And the reason I say that is because, um, so like to apply the example, let's say you had um, you know, a repository with you know, this you know whatever fraction like that point zero zero five um, percent, or you have something where it's nothing. You know, like, whoa, why would mm-hmm. I use that one? Because when we're talking about, this isn't necessarily just like, I want to use my words carefully, not to like downplay or dismiss anything, but mm-hmm. it's, I feel like it's a lot less speculative um, yeah. in this case versus when you're trying to judge the value or future value of art. Um, at least I personally struggle with that sometimes, uh, but mm-hmm. you know, YOLO, we're all going to make it. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but, uh, but there, there's the struggle there. But with code, right, there is... This is powerful and amazing, and this is subpar. Yeah, you know? and, and there's this reality. And mm-hmm. with Inbarch, because then something's open source, well, what, what stops me from just forking it and using it for free? And we mm-hmm. actually prevent things like that. Um, so what will happen is there will come, there will be a balance. It's like the free market where um, someone could, like, they could have the full option. Again, I'll say on one point to, it's optional here as well. Like, they could do nothing. But if someone were to institute some type of royalty, I feel like they're going to have a lot more success um, than, let's say, people trying to do the same on Magic Eden. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say this is because two fronts, one, um, code base, not to dismiss art, but uh, there is a lot more immediate utility and need. Like Mm -hmm. Code bases make things work. You know, Um, they bring things like they make a lot of things possible. Um, And so with that, like, I definitely see it because this is where a lot of those builders are going to come because they could build, they keep building on GitHub and kind of get screwed every now and then. Um, Or they could build in this completely, this completely seamless alternative. And Mm -hmm. if they want the choice to add in uh, royalty fees, they can do that. Or they can just keep doing nothing like they've been doing them. Um, Mm -hmm. But the option here is this is what will empower creators more, more than any other platform. Yeah. And then I do believe it will become the creator's choice. And when you're talking about like, look, I'm saying if, if, if all the devs or majority of the devs, like they decide this is our platform of choice, mm-hmm. then that is the platform of choice for devs. Mm-hmm. You know? They don't necessarily need to worry about selling or, or getting like non-devs to, to fork or it's not, it's not meant for speculation, you know, um, mm-hmm. but you would have another dev, I would imagine another team um, who absolutely wouldn't mind um this new system because it's more lucrative for them as well and yeah. it creates this a possibility for incentivized and protected open source yeah which would be great because i truly believe open source more than anything is what drives innovation yes but yeah it definitely it comes at a cost you know like, yeah like I, you said. and i'm glad you brought up open source i i um i i so if we could kind of use it as an example kind of walk people through the process of like how, how they would use Inbarch. Uh, probably several months ago, I was listening to a lecture from a, I think he was a Stanford computer science professor, and he was talking about how open source 
uh, because the, sp the space is so much different, Web3 versus Web2 is so much different because things are open source, things are very collaborative in nature. And because of that collaboration and using ide people's ideas, you get to build through problems and past obstacles a lot quicker than you normally could in Web2, right? But the thing that I don't feel like he addressed very well was like, uh, like yes, but like you're, you're talking about those costs of intellectual property and people not being, you know, paid. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. People getting paid well for those ideas, right? Like it's, it is incentivized to build well, but it's also going to de-incentivize people to put their ideas out there. And if we want the space as a whole to win, like we need those ideas to be, to be open source, but also protected. So if somebody has open source code, just walk me through like, okay, I have this idea. I have this code. Uh, I want to use in Varch. like walk me through like soup to nuts, like uh, what that would look like to get that protection protection that in would offer through the pair chains. So immediately for code, and very very soon, like we have we have all the teams together. I actually need to send a, a nice formal intro message today, but we'll be mm -hmm. starting the get art here soon. So okay. we'll hopefully, be able to provide like an actual visual walkthrough. Um, and mind you, this is just for code. We can apply this towards nearly every every realm of of, of IP derived like asset class, I guess you could say, or just the, mm -hmm. the broader IP asset class. Um, but it's it's rather simple. Um, so at least with Get Arch, like this experience, it's I want to say it's not going to be like all too impressive, and that's the beauty of it. Like it's just going to be what you're used to. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to be smooth. Uh, so when people go on there, um, automatically. So with Get Arch, it will detect whether or not you do have an account. Um, if you have an account, then you can log in. Um, okay. And is this using have... is this using like a like the ID? for example or so this is all we want to tie this in um and i have this as because i know you want to talk about resumes and stuff too um the, the did is not something that's off the rip would be like required like you must okay. have this okay. um but it is going to be a feature and yeah, okay. be a sure. feature that i i would i personally believe will naturally just become a standard uh, I, I really I, do, I believe that over time um because of all the added benefits that did brings Okay. But yeah, if I can add on to that, I think that that's a big bridge that, that is eventually going to need to be crossed because if we want really globalized adoption, DIDs are very, it's a very important, but having different DIDs from 15 different solutions, it might work in terms of industry standards, but we already kind of have that problem. You know, coming from the healthcare kind of background, it seems like every other healthcare system or healthcare hospital has a different documentation system or framework within their own hospital. So if you are a doctor or a nurse on one hospital, you have to train for another one. I feel like that's incredibly inefficient and feels very web too. you You're mm -hmm. right. I think DIDs are going to have to, uh, there's going to have to be a standard either for all of them to be able to come together and collaborate and be able to apply to one because uh, this is DIDs and what Invarch offers is a proof of history without it having to have any kind of consistent mechanism to that, but it allows people to say, yes, I've done this work, I've worked here for so long. And it, the DID part is only available to those that actually, you know, for the actual job that you might be applying to. They're the only ones that can actually say, hey, this is the real person, this is who they say they are. And that's thus you still keep your, not, your anonymity without having to, you know, I feel like that's really cringe now in the US where you, to apply to a job, you have to give, you know, this, this frontline person, um, all your information with, and it leaves you incredibly vulnerable where you don't have to do that. Right. Um, just to prove to say, yes, I am who I am. And yes, I have all this experience. Um, so talk to me a little bit about how you're able to do that with Invark and be able to convert that. I want to say, so the, the key here and, Okay, there's a few different ways to look at it. So first and foremost, remember that Invarch is a network, a, more specifically a Polkadot parachain, which means that we're able to focus on what we do well, which is our primitives, our NFT and DAO primitives, um, while others are able to focus on their solutions such as DID, um, it's like not the kilts, for example. Yeah, but gotcha, gotcha. I, but I, I want to highlight, because you make a phenomenal point. You know, I, I, I say what I just said, because um, it means that when we build a DAO, um, it's not, we don't need like kilts in our runtime. You know what I mean? We can just boom, plug in. I, and I think that's, it's a, most people are, the, the narrative before has been, how do I deploy this one DAP on multiple chains? 
And I, I really believe there's the narrative's going to shift to how can I build this DAP using multiple chains, and that's what's going to that's going to change. That's going to be awesome. But that's a good point. Very good point. But like when it comes to DID, so understanding all of this, um, because this is a good point. If there are if there's 50 different freaking uh, like this this wallet that wallet this DID, do you need this one? Log in here, and then like oh what? No, I need to go set up an account on this new one because that's not the one mm-hmm. I was using. And do I have to re-verify myself all again? Do I got it? Um, yeah, that sounds that sounds like user experience disaster. Um, however, uh, understanding that, I will say I think then the the big winners here will be like DID aggregators. Um, so then, a little silly, but it's funny. As you imagine assets, we have all these assets scattered across all these different chains. And then people will come out with like a, a layer two, a roll up. And um, you a layer two, and this this layer two will try to, not even layer two sometimes, they just build dApps. Um, but typically, like a layer two, when they're trying to like connect different chains this way, they're usually not the safest. But um, it works. It works out, you know. And, and it's in the same sense as you can have all of these different technically different uh did salute did wallets but there could just be one or two probably you know one really like preferred standard aggregator to where it doesn't matter as long as you have one of these 50 (laughs) solutions Mm -hmm. then you know click click and good to go uh okay it'll it'll work so that would be my ideal um expectation um but what you said like i said very good point i really like the the medical like um standard like differences, I think that is a, that's a, it just proves um, the fact that there will be all these different documentation. Like, well, for them, it's standards for different things, but there will be all these different standards. Um, which I think I understand even more. So I thought it was, it was very for obvious reasons makes sense before, but I think I understand now even more why the Kilt protocol um, heavily focused on um, like business adoption, um, industry adoption. And like there was at one point I was like, you know, like, I really want to see more like um, like grassroots adoption, but I stand corrected. I, under, I understand like what they're going for. And it's like what you just said, you know, if there is this race for DID, then the best way to have a common standard, I think, is through what they do. Like, I'm pretty sure like they I'm going to get the name wrong, but they like set up like like the decentralized identity foundation. Um, like like they found that, and they have a bunch of key players and governments involved there. Um, and they're working with all of those, uh, like, working all these industries to get them to adopt their solution, so that for all of their users, this is the you know sport hand wallet is this is what you use. Um, so I mean, it makes sense. I, I, I think. Yeah. That, you know, yeah. 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 I mean, it's it's all good points, but. All right, let's switch the conversation yeah. over to to, the, to another big topic. Well, is- yeah, yeah. If we, actually, if we could go back and, and just finish uh, the code of this. So uh, in terms of code, you're taking code and then that, what that process looks like. Looks oh, like oh, you're actually uh, implementing in Barge. My bad. Um, finish that out. Yeah, so, so in regards when it comes to code, my bad. Um, so on GitArch, very, very easy, very seamless individual. Go on there, you have an account. You, it'll say log in. If you don't have an account, it will detect that. Bring you through like a login um, setup process. Uh, they create an account, make it very seamless. Um, you can download a wallet, get going. Uh, however, we're also oh, it's some alpha, but there's a yes. good chance that GitArch is going to be the first step in the ecosystem to display walletless onboarding. Um, oh wow! Okay, you were really excited for that. So we think that's going to be massive for adoption you don't need a wallet you don't even not you don't even know what the blockchain is and yeah yep. yeah it's gonna be awesome which i but, yeah, yeah i guess which is in further uh furtherance of uh, gavin wood's uh vision of like hey people don't even need to know about blockchain right to yeah. actually use our products but so they go in here so they have their there's there's different like starting points you could technically have repos already but let's say you're starting out new then mm-hmm. you're logged in it's as simple as you click new repo and then in the top right when it does page pops up very similar to GitHub, you put in uh, all the basic information. You have mm-hmm. the ability to add those like advanced settings. So, because we have like ownership and permissions over things, and you can like define the weights and all that for like it gets a bit technical for, for simple sake. You go in everything as usual in GitHub, but then you can select your license um, just like in GitHub. Um, now, right now, it's just it's a large list of licenses, but not our smart license. They're just they're pegged. They're there. It's 
it's good for, I guess you say, for understanding, for clarity. Um, but smart licenses is what are really, that's going to be next level, which will be coming next. Um, but once you do this, when you click create repository, what's happening in the background is imagine you're minting a repository. You're minting that Git object as an NFT. Um, and then from that point, it is stored on chain. There is the license attached to metadata. Um, but then you can also have very advanced customizable rights over the repository, such as mm -hmm. who has the ability and the access to, um, to edit, like basically who's owner, you can extend that. Um, you can make it to where if you have a team, they don't need permission to, to merge, they can go ahead, you can get tokens for that. Um, you can have it to where if no one has a token, then they can submit a request and then obviously, you know, that would have to be approved and things like that. Um, yeah. But very powerful when in the future. So it's all as far as like the experience goes, it's nothing too yeah. different from what the world used to. But when we roll out things such as smart licenses, that's when you'll be able to get a lot more intuitive yeah. and anticipate a separate dashboard, like a like an ownership tracking dashboard in a sense. Mm -hmm. And I was going to build this out. But what I would really like is imagine bear with me here. Um, mm -hmm. just the imagination. But imagine a neural network okay so a neural network is like all of these nodes they're all mm -hmm. connected okay but instead of nodes imagine repositories or, or just ip you know yes and all of those connections it would be really cool apart from the ownership links from like oh from this this was built and from this came this from this yes so, yeah but then like also chain the royalty flows okay okay i gotcha. think would be really cool so uh, so it is yeah. in part then generally so that that is supposed to be kind of like a repository of IP of, of these different ideas, and then if somebody comes along with a s similar idea, right, it could be compared, and and the idea would be that it would just be like they they, they could still those other people could still own those similar ideas, but they don't get rewarded for it because it's too similar to other people's ideas within the repository. Is that the idea? Right. So it's important, like detach, like Invarsh isn't like just for storing ideas. You know what I mean? Um, in Varge, you can make a DAP for storing ideas, but as mm -hmm. a as a blockchain, um, in Varge is its utility. Why it exists is it is it, because of its primitives, the primitives that it produces. Okay. Um, so then, what you want to build on top of there, and in the future, they even have it to where, let's say, a smart contract on Astar can. It's all you need. They can interact with the primitives on our chain. Okay. Um, I think that'd be really efficient too. I think that's going to change actually how most people build in the future. But, okay. um, but, but anyway, important to understand the difference, like not just for ideas, because like in the sense when I'm saying like they're minting that like as a repository, I mean, it's a code base. The code base is repo. Um, if someone wanted to like mint their idea, it's very abstract, um, mm -hmm. which of course you can do. You have your IP set. This is your base. You know what I mean? This is, you say the name of it, you know, my idea is, is a time machine. You know, yes, uh, yeah. But then you have different IP sets. Um, or just imagine you know, you have your root folder, and then in there you have other files and folders. And okay. those files and folders, those are the different components. Here's your vision, your business plan, whatever you need or you feel you need um, to display your idea. You know? Yes. Um, but now the utility for such assets. Yeah, like if somebody be, wanted to come in, you would then need a and... for that. Okay, so if somebody wanted to come in and use those pieces of IP, like, oh, like that, that fits really well into the, these other ideas that we had or this other project. Um, yeah, so then, like, you the need a type yeah. of, uh, so, then, so then from here, this is where it's cool because, like, in Varch, like, as a network, like, there really is a whole, like, new slew world of dApps that okay. you can build using these primitives that it just gets really exciting. Um, okay. And anything in regards of, like, like I said before, like, collaboration um is where it really shines so you can create um you can create a dap like imagine i don't think a bounty board you know but mm -hmm. i always thought it would it would be cool you know let's say if you had uh whether it's projects or even corporations or even governments you know there are <laughs> there are problems you know what i mean like we have these problems mm -hmm. we need solutions and having a dap where individuals can openly submit publicly submit um their solutions and because of our xda technology it would help keep it protected which i can talk about in a bit but okay. um be able to publicly share their solutions and just a nice easy system like 
Um, whether it's just the idea, obviously it's always better if something get built out. Um, but if let's say there's boom, we just want the ideas. They got the team. You know what I mean? But just like boom, ideas, ideas. You could have a board to where like whoever gives the best idea, like you win this bounty. And Interesting. you know, and you have the IP, but it's protected there. And part of the agreement is, you, it would, I would imagine, some transferring of rights to you know, if if I win, then obviously you're gonna build it, so I, you get the rights. Um, mm-hmm. Now this becomes a really interesting system to where people hypothetically uh like yeah they could if someone was really good at it i guess um yeah someone like what do you do for a living i have great ideas yeah yeah i was <laughs> i was literally thinking about that this morning like uh about i guess the the, the new economic opportunities it's going to produce for even i, I guess I, even well, I, deeper than creators like idea creators yeah. to some extent like i like to imagine that the person like whoever comes up with like the cure for cancer yeah, imagine they're probably going to be a doctor. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, but I've always thought like hypothetically, like imagine if someone, imagine like imagine if the person, the mind that that, that would think of such a cure. Yeah, they've 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 had the idea and then died, you know, already because it just never came to life. Or just mm-hmm. imagine, just imagine the world. Imagine how many on a daily basis great ideas fade away, yeah. Yeah. and imagine. Yeah. Where because like people be. have fear yeah because people have fear with sharing those ideas number one and then yeah. you know they they go away or never get executed well, yeah, and, well, and then how do you like the the question becomes like how do we share our ideas like especially in the age of the internet it, yeah. it's ironic um there's this yeah. shift happening now but at first the, you know like you didn't know who the heck people were you just mm-hmm. you know it, people were either horrified of the internet or they were all about it you know mm-hmm. um because of things like identity and which was which is funny but now here we are, and you know the internet has become, in my opinion, like the primary form of communication. Yes. Um, as as a species, it's the fastest form. We collaborate quickly. We get things done. I, you can be in Indonesia, and I'm in the U.S., and next thing you know, we're in a VR office together. Yeah. And like yeah. so. So this this is the new, this is that yeah. new medium. You know. Yeah. Um, this medium, is, uh, mediums, but yeah. like collaboration I, and the ability for people to. I was kind of getting off track there for a second, but I was going to say like the, the world changes. People need the ability to, in a digital sense, like how do I share my, my idea, my asset, whatever, like everything mm-hmm. in the world is, can be a file, you know, like every yeah. presentation you share files, every, every, these architecture plans that you sent files, the music I made files, everything is files. So if IP, we're already doing it. In Web two, Web two, our IP is already put together in form of files, just not a single primitives. But when mm-hmm. we do this, and we t- we can take things further, you can then include things such as DID. Um, you don't even necessarily need to, like DID to make sure like something's one to one. Like, but when it comes to protection, like theft and who I'm who I'm sharing my stuff with, like now we can actually create systems to where, and this is the irony, to where we can protect our IP, we can share, we can openly expose and share our IP while also protecting it better than ever before possible in the real world around Web2. Yeah, oh, man, that is uh, that is so huge. I mean, you could go into a lot of different different avenues there because it, it definitely excites me from a macroeconomic level, right? Like web, what Web2 did is connected us in ways that we never had before and we're able to share information. But now, the, the unfortunately, the, the tribalism that has a tendency to occur because of, people are trying to protect their ideas uh, if we can make that more collaborative, like we can get so much more done, like so much more progression, so much, so many more cool things built. We try to like hide ideas, and I get it. Like, and it's one of the things that we want to see a change in is like, look, when someone has a great idea, you got to, you got to, apart, apart from like doing nothing with it, you got a choice, you know, you yeah. can either bring it out there for the world and, or, or you can, you know, you can try and lock it down. And, and like, yeah. and the reason why you do that is because, like, I mean, I, it's a good idea. If anyone's going to make money, it's going to yeah. be me. And no one's going to steal my idea. And the thing is, yeah. Yeah. if someone steals your idea, it's not, you don't just, like, boop, you, you don't get notified and, like, shut down. No, 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 no. Like, even you could spend $50,000 in a year. You could even pay, you could pay extra money for a fast track, which is, like, a whole freaking year, which is, we're talking about seconds over here. Yeah. You know? So, like, you could do all of that. All right. And then someone can still steal it. And if you don't yeah. ever hear about it, then yeah. you never, you, you literally, you yeah. got robbed and yeah. you paid for and, protection for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, just that entire legal the headache uh, of trying to get uh, it, it, the traditional infrastructure that there is to protect it is, is so expensive. Well, it's, it's, a it's, 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 it's a deficit. 
There's, yeah, they, yeah the, exactly. the government's That's not going to complain. Decision. You know, like, yeah. I don't think they're going to complain. They <laughs> operate, um, usually, they uh, sometimes, some years, close to a billion-dollar deficit. It's usually, it's always in the millions, tens of, if not hundreds of millions yeah. every year. They're understaffed. Most of the employees are not happy. They don't like yeah. the jobs. Um, yeah. Like, yeah. I'm just I, saying, I, like, there's, there's a, the government, it's not like this is a, it's a losing battle for the government. The government knows. The government's just like, but it has to be done, you know? Yeah. Whereas what we're saying is like, we agree, let's do it better, faster, quicker, transparently. Yeah. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll, you know? we'll definitely have, well, oh, man, this is such a big topic we'll have to have you on. On again, they get into more of the specifics of the, 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 the framework that we're dealing with now and how those, how we could actually solve those problems within Barge. Talk, talk to me a little bit about uh, Tinkernet. What's the difference between, uh, there, I guess, the, the Kusama parachain, obviously, but what, wh- what's your pitch to creators of like, hey, this is why you'd want to use Tinkernet versus uh, Enbarge, yeah. or how much difference is there? So, like with Enbarge, like we really are trying to Enbarge Tinkernet together, like this whole system. Like pro- we want to provide the, it's technically layer ones, you know, there's two of them, but the we want to provide the ultimate ecosystem where innovation, where creators can take off. And, and understanding that, there's different phases. Um, of development there's there's you know ideation to creation and there's usually uh, a lot of not everyone makes it to the end um a lot of people they don't make it to the end they realize for good reason um there's troubles there's bugs so in the same sphere like understanding this development process is why we have tinkernet why it is so important um why i'm very confident many people will be surprised like i'm not going to go around you know correct because it's not worth it like in one sense it's our canary network technically mm-hmm. but i can't stress enough this is its own beast um yes yeah. this is where like yeah it's completely its own beast um this is where innovation starts this is square one this is where our staking um mechanism osif is specifically designed to kickstart and uplift innovation from nothing to something um, yeah. this is okay. this is where you have your social test bed this is where not sure we have our cocoa now i'm not saying like <laughs> Like, don't, like, just ship out risky code. You can test all that on Rococo, mm-hmm. but how does the community use this? What's the actual feedback? Do they like it? Are they using it as intended? Do yeah. they make find an issue? You know, like, this is this is where you, this is an essential part, you know, that community feedback loop. And yeah. what we're able to do is we're able to, through the funding, through that staking, that crowdfunding mechanism, mm-hmm. also integrate that social feedback loop, that, that filter. Um, okay so talk with, to me about that talk yeah. to me about that aggressive staking mechanism like and, and, and how people could uh can benefit from that okay, so yeah we're really excited for osif uh it stands for on-chain innovation funding um so our osif protocol will be rolling out looks like in a, a month's time or less um oh wow okay. we're, we're really hyped for it um reason being is inspired um the same premise from like astar's dap staking um i always make sure to give them a shout out um love what soda's doing over there but um, that same idea of there's inflation drive funds that community is able to the community has a sway over how it's allocated towards projects. You know, that's the general idea. Um, however, what we have is a very streamlined, seamless autom- or, uh, autonomous um, process for this. So, like, there's not necessarily like, community governance isn't involved. It can be very fast, a very fluid, um, scalable uh, process. So, what happens is you have IP sets and you have Tinker Token. Now, individuals are going to be, in one sense, stake their NFT um, for the first time, which is going to be really cool. Um, and and, and what this happens, NFT is, is this like a, just like a code set. asset or, or just, just a piece of IP of some kind and it's in an NFT form? Granted, if it's, if like you're, if you're, if your like proposal is literally doorknob, um, then like, like just a text of door, like, you're probably not going to get that far. Um, yes, yeah. Because yeah. there's freedom flexibility there. Um, okay. But individuals will be able to stake their NFTs, their IP sets, um, and individuals will be able to stake their tokens. Um, technically, it's towards it's it all goes it's towards collators. But um, as far as the user is, their experience goes, they're staking their tokens towards projects, towards IP sets that they like, that they you know they would. They support. Interesting. Um, so, so is this sort of, sort of like kick, sort of like Kickstarter on blockchain in terms of like you take your Tinker tokens and you're staking them with that particular IP set. Or towards and, you, so like, let's if I'm John, let's say I'm John and I have my IP set and yeah. I've, I proposed it 
then what happens is there's technically there's a voting period. Um, it's it's integrated into it's a scaling auto like it can, it's autonomous. Like there's no we don't need governance. It does its own thing. There's a cycle. Um, but it's like because it, there's gonna be like a limit at first, like ten mm-hmm. that actually receive funding. Um, but how these ten are chosen will be through a voting process that's directly integrated with the staking experience. So you don't have to go to a different UI none of that. Um, as far as the user is concerned, the first like the when we very when we first start, there will be a voting period. Those users are gonna stake. It's the same experience for them. It's like, oh, I'm supporting this project. Um, mm-hmm. Those projects at first, they're not gonna immediately get um, rewards for those first couple of days because they haven't been yes. chosen yet. Now those stakers will receive a little boost in their rewards um, yeah. on the offhand, but and, um, and that staking staking rewards are coming from that IP sets token or from Tinker. So. So that will come from, this is important for me to explain, actually, um, yeah. because we have, there's IP staking, there's IP farming, and there's IP donations. Um, what we're first rolling out is IP staking, and um, IP farming is what will include, like, that IP sets token and, and things like that. But for IP um, staking, what we're about to roll out, which is NFT staking, um, with this, this is where, so, like, right now, there's 11.7 million Tinker tokens. When we roll out OSIF, there will, it will then kickstart the 10% annual inflation. Um, the reason for the 10% annual inflation is to support the service of IP staking um, for innovation funding. Uh, from this, what happens is people obviously be able to stake 40% of all networks inflate, like all network inflation, 40% of that will go towards um, the rewards for like people who are staking their tokens. However, 60% of that will be directed towards um, the actual, the people who have proposed or staked their IP sets, their, their NFTs. Oh, and okay. it'll be a bit more lucrative for them because, so it's a smooth, it's no matter what, like um, if you have a Tinker token and you're staking, the AP, like the interest that you receive, it won't change. It won't matter which project you stake to. None of that would matter. It won't change your interest rate. However, it's a lot more lucrative for those who are staking their IP sets. Um, I'm going to give a real simple, I know I said there was going to be 10, but just for the sake of quick math, let's say there's two IP sets. Um, mm-hmm. Now everyone is getting the same, everyone with their tokens is getting the same APY, but let's say that out of those two projects, um, 80% of people um, you know, supported the one over the other. The other one you know, got 20%. Yeah. So from the 60%, like, okay, so 10%, or you can say six percent of you know of the token supply because that's sixty percent of the ten percent. Um, so six mm-hmm. percent of the token supply would hypothetically over the year of this thing would be split between those two. In this case, one would end up seeing a lot higher earnings than the other. Um, okay, had a lot more support because um, because because of the stakers that are reading their ideas and liking them and and it, I guess kind of indicating like hey these these are good ideas in a decentralized manner more people are voting for this idea. So that 60% of staking, they would get a little bit more of that. 60%. Yeah, it's all proportionate. Yeah. So like if, proportional. Okay. Yeah. It's all proportionate for in the future. It'll be quadratic. Um, okay. We're going to oh, use wow. quadratic funding model. Uh, I, cause I, okay. I, I'm not gonna lie. I stumbled across it a couple weeks ago. Clicked. Looks good. I love it. Um, let's do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll, we'll get to that. It's actually, it's actually really easy and quick. It's just a few lines, but, um, gotcha. So speaking, speaking so, of alpha, that's all. <laughs> Yes, some alpha. I so <laughs> that that is really man. That's really interesting. So, um, th- in terms of that, though, th- that all that staking rewards are being paid out in Tinker tokens, then yes. to the the stakers and the IP set stakers as well. Yeah, yeah. Things get interesting okay. when you get to IP farming, um, which we're gonna actually we'll roll out in this order. Um, yes, IP staking first. Then we're gonna do IP donations just because. It's going to be quick. Um, and then okay. we're going to roll out IP farming um, third. IP farming is where things get a lot more lucrative. Um, okay. So this is where um, ki- it's kind of like um, like an, IC- an ICO process on chain. But like, I want to stay away from the terminology because it's important yes. to understand that this doesn't like – someone could be using IP farming to distribute beta access to their game. For example, okay. okay, like okay, they have their IP set. It's, let's say they're, they're building a game, a metaverse, whatever, and they have defined these fungible tokens that give special access to the beta. Um, which I know a lot of people typically use the NFT for the gating, but I think in the future you'll find there's different 
reasons for different models. In this model, it's a lot more efficient um, for us to delegate the rights through the tokens. Um, but the point is, someone can... Here's how IP farming will work. I'm going to start this way. Mm-hmm. My bad, I'm all over the place sometimes. No, you're good. So, you're good. <laughs> with IP farming, um, what happens is individuals, like, they can stake towards the network, and then they can delegate some or all of their staking rewards towards a project, um, which means like they're not actually immediately paying anything. It's they're just it's, they're just taking, I guess, the loss on the staking rewards in exchange for um, a different opportunity. Now, when they delegate that towards a project, that project would obviously have a goal, um, and there's a minimum and a maximum amount of like block time to receive, or not a, a minimum, but like a maximum amount of block time to receive that goal like obviously that way people don't go to support something and it just gets ends up going on forever um because it never gets enough support uh the reason for this is when people stake towards a project it doesn't directly put towards like that project's owner or owners at first mm-hmm. it definitely gets put to a vault and then once the that threshold has been hit then the token their rewards get sent to that project owner and then the whatever you know the, the token from that project the ip token from that project would then be dispensed to you know the individuals or whatever there could be vesting all that too interesting um, if needed but so is it sort of story. like it's mini own parachain process sort of it's it's inspired by it yeah. and, the, and the idea okay. here is you want to protect people from so like the reason they got locked is because if something misses then those rewards will just go towards the the people that they would have already gone towards okay. that way gotcha. it removes risk like granted you know you could you can't something could be as promising as, as as all could be and then one day just poo you know but yeah um, yeah if you're able to if there's like a minimum baseline of support that that is you know kind of looking forward to be decided by community governance but that's being looked for um before releasing funds to these projects to prevent like scammers and things like that i think it's i think it'll be really really healthy for the gotcha. for the gotcha so so staking is a little bit more specific or i guess maybe more low low a low risk lower risk i guess in terms of like tinker tokens specifically like oh, tinker yeah. token contribution and rewards farming is more ico ish in nature but not exactly uh, yes in terms of the the tokens and rewards that the project wants to give you from the from that uh from their idea itself or their, yeah. their project because yeah. that could be that could be um it could be what you're used to where like this is a this is a government token you know what I mean? Okay. This is the, gotcha. this, that token. Or, like I said, like it could just be like this gives you special access. Gotcha. And because then from the experiences, yeah, I paid some staking rewards for special access to this beta. It just yeah. shifts the narrative. Like DeFi is so we're going to be here, but we can use these. Hear me out. We can use tokens to accumulate value faster than I think DeFi can for some people. Interesting. And that's what we okay. want to do. You know what yeah. I mean? We and, want people and I- to create value, not just shift value. Yeah, and I guess it's a more nuanced way rather than just like, hey, okay, here's a bunch of airdropped NFTs or airdrop tokens. Like a more nuanced way to reward people who are actually using the protocol or actually kind of furthering that progress and development. Absolutely, um, yeah. And then also like feedback. Man, that's interesting. Like, I'm, I'm, it yeah. would probably be a hard pill to swallow, but if you know someone's uh, yeah. if no one's supporting you, I'm not gonna say. Yeah. I'm, la- I'm not. I'm definitely not the one who's gonna say it's not a good idea. But yeah. I will say there must, at the very least, there's a kink somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think being a, what? Yeah. yeah. Like get, giving that actual accurate feedback is actually really valuable. But a lot of times, you know, it, people kind of lose interest or, you know, they, you know, everyone's always, you know, wondering what's in it for them. And you know, that's just, that's how the, you know, we were progressing, Human nature. I yeah. guess. But yeah, but I, I think that's really interesting that they can provide value to people to give them valuable impact in, in return and kind of further tokenizing even that um that feedback I and mean, that's that's really cool that's that's pretty game changing um uh more stuff that we could park on for a long time can you tell me about um tell me about util dao and how that kind of uh you know what are the connections to Envarge and tinkernet um and why what what benefit do uh util dao holders uh, what do you they have you. no i'm kidding <laughs> yes. um no i have uh I love everything that's like been happening with Yule Down and all this. Yes, and, um, and and but first of all, I mean, congratulations! It's been killing it on Singular. Thank you, um, thank you. It's I, the tech, uh, been been selling it more than we have. So yeah, well, sell tell us more uh, in the this uh, this talk here, this space, like why why Yule? Yeah. So, well, first and foremost, like realize 
a lot of people when we explain our tech, you know what I mean? There's people, a lot of people like, oh, it's very giga brain. And I feel like it's like, it sounds good, but that yeah. means to me, like, all right, I failed to get my point across how I wish I would have. You know what I mean? I yes. failed to educate. Yeah. Um, and I just realized, you know, blockchain, it's not exactly the smoothest thing to have an expectation to educate the world. Um, it can get a little a little tricky, and but that's because like all the technical jargon, people are more so. It's a lot more effective when you can show them how it works. Um, mm-hmm. And so with DoodleDow, that was our, the idea here is rather than just go around and try and trying to explain the tech, you know, let's in tandem, let's let's keep doing that, but in tandem, let's completely emerge people with the tech. Let them see firsthand how it works. I mean, could you imagine explaining someone what a video game would be? No, game controller. Yeah. Let's give just them the controller. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give them the control, let them play, let them see, and let them be like, "Yeah, I like this," or "Yeah, I see the use." Um, and that's that's the approach here. So we have our Dallas CDK that we're gonna, uh, that we're working on. Going to be rolling out some more information here in the future. Really excited for. But uh, with the whole idea here is that you know, we're probably very familiar with the fact that most DAOs are not actually DAOs. Um, or a lot of DAOs are just which I'm not knocking it. I'm I'm in some myself. I love them. Um, mm-hmm. Especially the people in the people in them, but uh, a lot of DAOs are really just um, congregations of, of people in Discord servers. Um, mm-hmm. There's decentralized doesn't just mean we have many people, you know. Like there's there's the governance is not decentralized. Um, the processes are not autonomous, and mm-hmm. there is no organization, you know, attempts, you know, but the, the lack of true organizations, um, and which means is there's. They lack the, they have like channels, but they struggle to have like, an, like imagine a business. You have different departments working on what they specialize in to achieve an overall goal. Mm-hmm. And Dow Discord is not made for that. However, yeah, <laughs> um, it is the nice UI that everyone, it, well, okay, mixed opinions on the quality of the UI, but it's the UI that everyone's familiar with. You know? mm-hmm. um, so with that, what happens here is break it down. So, Fat contracts. Uh, it's made by Fallon Network. Check them out. Um, yes, massively awesome. Uh, I've been saying this for for like a year now. I'm gonna keep saying it. Um, fat contracts are gonna be huge. We're gonna make sure that the, we're gonna be using them a lot in some really powerful um, examples. But with that, what happens is create a fat bot. This fat fat contracts created bot. Um, so you create a fat bot. Now this fat bot is owned by an IP set. Um, so the reasons you do that, so it's owned by an Inbarch IP set, and the reasons you do it is because of the multi-sig functionality that it's kind of just like as a default feature in our primitives, uh, because we have like these multi-class fungible tokens. I've kind of alluded to them over this talk where like you can differentiate different rights and things like that. So imagine you have like different tokens that are able to define different permissions, uh, but the cool thing is here. So imagine this. Let me bring it down simpler. So you have this bot, and through proxy, you know this this bot is owned by a multi-sig solution. Okay, and typically in a server, there's always and this is a pain point. Um, the server needs a owner, a creator of that server, and whoever creates that server, no matter how much you trust them, I'm just saying, they technically are always God over that server. Mm-hmm. Um, if they wanted to, they could delete everything. You change the roles, go nuts, delete the whole server if they wanted to. Also, if they ever get hacked, I mean, hypothetically, game over, you know, um, mm-hmm. or at least you got a lot of problems coming up because you got to, you know, people got to fix stuff. So there's this single point of failure. Now, what we're able to do is abstract this single point of failure. We're able to, well, not abstract that, we're able to remove this single point of failure through replacing that ownership from an individual make it a bot and then abstract ownership away through this, this multi-sig solution to where the owner, the through proxy, it's technically this bot is the owner, but who gets to decide on like the calls, who gets to control the bot that is all seamlessly managed through our multi-sig solution, which means this bot can then be used to decentralize otherwise centralized ownership on really almost any web platform. But in this instance, we're going to use it on Discord. Um, the reason being is so now we've done all this. We have decentralized the ownership over the server. 
this is cool. However, what the DAO SDK ultimately is, is a fully decentralized fat client for interesting uh, for DAOs to where, so like the, the back end, so everything from governance to rights, which can all be defined using a mix of NFTs and using these tokens. Um, but individuals, their rights and roles or even access to the server, all of that can be gated um, and okay. fine tuned and get trustless. Like you don't have to necessarily like, Hey Joe, can you, can you add this role when they get, you know what I mean? You don't have to worry about mm-hmm. none of that. Um, if someone were to like, wh- whether it's an NFT or a token, whichever they are, a fungible token, whichever they're using to identify their rights, roles or permissions, if they were to give away or so whatever, lose the ac- ownership over those, ac- uh, those assets mm-hmm. in the same breath, they would be losing access to those channels. It's all seamless. It's all together. You can manage through Discord. You can manage um, treasuries, sub-treasuries. You can have different pods. So, like, you can have um, UtilDAO, and then you can have one channel or one group, a body of design orgs. Or designers, my bad, sorry, terminology. Like, five O's at the end of everything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> designers. Um, I, was, I was about to say, like, design orgs and uh, moderators. And all, but uh, you have designers. You have um, developers. You have marketers. These are all, in the real world, these are all different departments. They are what make up an organization. Through Discord, people will be able to set up and organize different pods, different departments. And these departments will have you know, individual members who are part of them. They can, even within those individual uh, departments or pods, see like leadership um, through built-in reputation that's built in, into this fat client. Um, again, like all the different pods, organizations, and bodies work together doing their own thing. You can have one main treasury, which allocates then like sub treasury funding. So like imagine how like there's, there's the U S government, they decide on the budget, but really what they're doing is deciding on where the money goes. Then, yeah. then all of those committees, they decide on how to spend their money. And what we can see is the same exact system um, for governance, multi-layer governance managed directly through Discord. Um, and the wow. cool thing here is it's a fat client. So, uh, we will, of course, in the future, roll out our own custom UI. Um, probably a bit more swanky, but um, the cool thing here is that, hypothetically speaking, whether you're on Discord or you're using our UI, um, you're, it's, oh, it's all the same DAO. Um, it's just two different UI methods to interact with it. Gotcha. So... Oh, man, that's deep. <laughs> it's cool. Um, you can do, you can do like so with the abstract, like the you could have that that, that fat bot multi state gun. This the solution yeah. we're talking about. You could mm-hmm. extend that towards. Um, so imagine like a Twitter social media account profiles. You could then have like literally the social media account essentially managed through the doubt. Maybe even just essentially managed directly through Discord itself too. Um, if we were to integrate that, but the point is like the the. Th- what it does at a low level, you can apply mm-hmm. to so many other systems. And because yeah. of how, like, you can really, like, file folder structure for NFTs, like, that you're able to, to store and also build with on Invert. Mm-hmm. Like, you can build a website using just NFTs. Um, and then that website can be stored um, and owned, actually owned on chain by the DAO. And yeah, okay. It's just, it's, it's yeah. an instance where, like, I will argue, like, I'll, not everything needs to be on chain um mm-hmm. like i was like certain mess- messages don't necessarily need consensus um not to say like i'm i will side note i'm very interested in sumi what they're building that looks it looks mm-hmm. really cool but side note um but what is important is the assets the primitives like that's what we need all on chain the governance the trust let's abstract that let's move get rid of the trust mm-hmm. and what we're able to do is provide all of that but um at least at first, and it, we believe will be a, a powerful way, and it's giving it to people through a UI that they're already used to. Okay. Which is, you know, yeah. it's so no change there. Um, yeah. It would That's be certain. someone like add this bot to your server, and or, yeah. or eventually you go to this website and then boom. But yeah. so I, I mean, that's a really interesting proof of concept. Uh, I'm definitely building on the infrastructure that people are using uh, pretty there's a often lot. right now. So there's a lot more. The honest, when it comes to NFTs, DAOs like. I probably need like at least like two hours to go over all of that because we have yeah <laughs> some, we gotta like even we're bringing out like some next level stuff like when it comes to like because like the DAOs and the sub DAOs and multi sig ownership like what rule set environments defined within these DAOs over their 
it's going to get really crazy. Like the level of fluid cost, uh, just fluidness that organizations mm-hmm. can see. Um, yeah. we, we truly believe that like these primitives, imagine like, like a stem cell in a sense, like this can, a stem cell can kind of become, I'm not, I'm not a doctor, but, uh, more or less, whatever you kind of need it to become in, yeah. in that field. And when it comes to ownership, NFTs, like DAOs, this whole world, we've designed our primitives because, again, we're a network. Well, you can yeah. build DAOs on us, but we've designed it in a low-level way to provide the ultimate stem cell for these, these, this industry. Yeah. These, you know. Using the primitives. Ah, yeah. Man, this is deep. So if we could close – oh, man, you, you definitely – we could talk about all these different topics for, uh, for a long time. But if you could close on uh, just the use of – where, where you see Remark NFTs uh, playing a role? I know uh, at your talk at, at Decoded, you kind of talked a little bit about the nestability feature um, and that use. Is, is that mainly for like IP sets then um, for, oh, really for users? Or I know you guys understand it, um, which is important, but I think it's also important for others to understand. Like, yes, please. please there's do. a difference between, because like what we've done, and like, I, I've talked about like what's why it's like cool and powerful. But, like, it's like we have like this tree structure composability and that's that is good when you're thinking of like mapping and things like that in ownership but what remark provides is and this goes a long way they've made it to where like the actual display the ui the rendering all that logic is that is remark and if you don't have that you're leaving everything up to front-end developers um which means every single new dap every single time will have to decide all of the the rendering the, the logic needed to properly display what they're looking for like because what we, we map but remark actually brings like this logic rendering and multi-composability which is which is really powerful so with all this like i would say when it comes to if we're talking about code well actually now i got oh my phone just shut off my bad when we're talking about code um when it comes to like the display of code right there like that could be instant but maybe not the strongest use case but when we're talking about like collaboration like music collaboration artist collaboration or even DAOs, businesses forms being displayed this is all very if we can add this out of the box yeah uh, the the rate at which people it's a compounding factor the Mm -hmm. the rate at which people can develop and build on top of us you know because otherwise if we don't have this Mm -hmm. but someone else does you know then they're going to be able to get going get going faster over there and in my opinion building a lot more powerful applications or a lot more powerful yeah apps. um but yeah the big thing yeah is, and ultimately ultimately all those i all those fundamental ip sets are nfts aren't they well yeah that's the thing like all these things are nfts like all this yeah. is nfts like it's this is nfts are we've seen them a lot and i love me jpegs but nfts can be so much more than that mm-hmm. also um Absolutely. so it's it's yeah. just really cool. like and in the future like with remark like i'm really excited too like especially when it comes to like collaboration and there's this one app i have in mind but i don't want to share it because it's just complete alpha <laughs> yeah wait, but, wait for it I, I put it on an ip set right? <laughs> <laughs> but but there's a uh, the thing is mark remark uh, i really hope people will come to understand this because of how well remark has been designed it's going to allow creators to, no matter which network the protocol is featured in, it's going to allow creators to build faster, to build more lucrative, more complex, more dynamic um, solutions, or to provide more dynamic features and services than you can, than you'll have out of the box in any other ecosystem. Yeah. Yeah. And if I can, you know, to, to round it all up, I think at the end of the day, what you guys are providing is that solid foundational structure for a, a, a solid house to be built. D apps allow for the framing to actually to come together. And then what Remark allows you to do is to make your house look however you want it, but to be able to add that uh, multi composability to it, um, well, where actually, com- actually communities can, can really. Your house is blue, and next thing you know, it's like, I don't know, white picket fence. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And it, it really allows that power to, to be decentralized in a way with the foundation that you guys ha- have and what you're offering with the network itself. Uh, community power just explodes, right? And it allows now the ability to kind of track that responsibility. That's how it's being shared, how people are being provided. Like the DApps that are going to be created on Embark are going to be so, so strong. 
And then when you add that composability layer on top of the remark, what it offers as an NFT standard, you're just supercharging and hyperdriving that NFTs as DAOs to another level. And that's um, the, like the beauty of our, I suppose like our design is uh, it helps make sense for people. Like, cause I'm mentioning NFTs, NFTs, like where's like the, the, the structure is, um, the really awesome thing is like, imagine like sort of market NFTs, like these assets, these primitives, imagine I am before. And what I'm talking about, imagine this is a, a rap, you know, like, um, yes, you could you just mention NFTs this way, but imagine there's a rapper, there's standards, there's really powerful standards like remark, which do all of these next level things. And then what I am before does is it steps in and it just gives a, a good old, I don't know, crazy governance IP hug. And it's like, Hey, you can do this now too. Yeah, you know? exactly, exactly. And it, you you build you build on top of each other. And that's, uh, you know, in the spirit of Polkadot and ecosystem, this is essentially what users want, right? You want to be able to take these multiple um, systems and be able to use them to power each other up because that is what essentially Web3 Modular is. development is what, it's, it's the key to building quickly. Um, it's important too. Like building is a competitive thing for sure. But like knowing that like having like the remark team and the work that they're doing you know it, it allows a lot of other people there's 10 things to to do well hey this thing we can we can move it to the side or we can put it and we can focus on all the other things because you build up this trust you know with with other teams and, and what they're building on and then you kind of just have like the sense and it's cool you know because you're able to build um knowing of what's coming and what's also being built built out around you and knowing that it's going to be there to help you and I think it's one of the really awesome experiences about building in the Polkadot ecosystem. Right, right. Well, thank yeah. you so much, Dakota. I we really Absolutely. appreciate you coming up here and, and coming with us and, and just dropping some knowledge um, and breaking it down to, to a point where we can all understand it. Because at, at the end of the day, uh, none of this means anything if people aren't able to use it and know how to use it. Uh, but you did a masterful job on, on doing that. So I want to yeah. commend you on that. Absolutely. Hey. Yeah, Dakota. I, I miss you guys too. I hope I see you guys yes. again. Yeah, I hope we can uh, get together, go get a, go get some uh, Mexican food again. I will be in New York. When I see Mark in the chat, um, I will be in San Francisco for the for the summit. Um, so if, if any of you guys will be there, definitely cool to catch up. Yep, definitely would be. Now, uh, Dakota, as a uh, uh, and wrapping up, uh, I know you mentioned in terms of some things that are coming out in the future. OSEF, uh, when can people roughly uh, expect OSEF to come out, and like how would they? connect um connect with you and, and get more updates on on the stuff coming out from Invarge. so i want i want to avoid a specific date just because initially we were like i would be ready in october but it might still be but like i don't want to it's always good to say november and then if it comes sooner it comes sooner yeah. if it comes on time it comes on time you know what i mean expectations yeah, 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 yeah. meter expectations yeah, yeah um precisely so i will i'm going to say november and then if anything happens faster awesome but worst case scenario, I was right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, uh, is the best way to get a hold of you if people have like more questions, uh, like through Twitter or Telegram or the best way? Best way to get like in like in touch, I would definitely say is like to check out uh, to join like Discord. Um, Twitter is my jam. Like I love Twitter. You feel anyone can feel free to message me. I'm just going to be very honest. <laughs> I'm busy and I, yes. you know what I mean? I, 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 I don't want to feel bad. I don't want someone to message me. And yes. then it's like, Oh, he doesn't care. Like I message back yes. a lot of people all the time, but like sometimes yes. I miss someone and then I, and then I'll feel bad. And then, um, but yeah, I'd say the best way to stay up to date would definitely be like through our discord following, uh, Invarch at Invarch network on yes. Twitter, um, following along those channels as well. Um, gotcha. and if, also if you, you're in if you now, that's, that's a really easy way. To get yes. to get a hold of me as well, but um yes, so and, and yes, and and people can get to can join Noodle DAO by going to Singular, pick the, up the NFT, and connecting through Discord. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So for right now, we don't have like we don't have the DAO CDK up right now. Right now, it's uh, as much as I my bane against it. Um, right now, we're using regular old Discord just for the sake of com congregation and communication. Um, you if you want full access, you know, pick up a ticket. Hop in. It's really awesome. It's going to be really. I, I don't want to speculate on price, you know, all that stuff. I'm just going to say this. I'm very confident that when the Dallas CDK launches, fact, there will no at that point in time, 
no other NFTs will have such value growing utility than these. I'm very confident on that. Um, that is my mission. And I say that because they, it'll allow people, it's not just speculative value. It'll allow people to grow, to build, you know, you obviously you got to do something, but it, I recommend it. You know, it, it, I want to see as many people part of this experience as possible. It's sold out, which is awesome, but uh, you know, secondary market, still good to get more new people in, but separate to that, if that's not your jam, we do have our visitors channel, um, which you can hop in nonetheless and just ask questions and things. If you're curious, like, you know, how's this work? Perfect. Perfect. Yes. Do we have so any I'm going to go ahead and Very open good. the, I'm going to open the floor up to uh, just people to ask a couple questions before we, we leave. Um, so we have our first one here, Rick, you want to go ahead and ask your question? Oh, hi. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm actually come up to ask questions about I'm my case. So uh, I, I get, I can wait. I can wait. If, if uh, you can give me a few minutes, maybe uh, before you finish. Sure, sure, sure. Um, if anybody here has any questions for uh, Dakota and Invarch and Tinker Nan, Yudo Dow, et cetera, right, yeah, go ahead and uh, request and we'll get you up here. Uh, in the meantime, if you want, Rick, if you already have your question, we can go ahead and just answer it. Yeah, I don't mind. You want to answer it for Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to interrupt. I mean, uh, I only have a question for Al um, Marquis for now. Um, I, I, I don't understand that the um, F, uh, arc in in enough. I mean, uh, only jumping like uh, uh, in the pretty last minute. So uh, I'll I'll wait to the probably last minute when when you guys finish the uh, question about the uh, uh, before last question about Al Marquis. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, you're good. There's nothing wrong. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I, mean, overall, this I have this pattern, and it's literally been every. I don't know what it is. I take it as a good thing because I initially I'm like, man, no one, no one likes my stuff. But then uh, <laughs> I get a lot of compliments after the space, so I'm like, I'm just, I'm just uh, too critical on myself. But there's definitely a pattern after I do AMAs where like I don't really get questions. <laughs> yes, really covered it all. Honestly, you got it all. It's uh, I, I will say like you know I've I. I, I used to do professional speaking, et cetera, and all that kind of stuff. And I will say, like, the re, uh, you have a good point where you bring this massive idea. You do a good job of explaining it. You might blow people's minds at the beginning of it, but I think with the reiteration that you do, giving examples, it's a, it does a really good job of tying it in. And it takes time to digest. No matter who you are, how smart you are, um, a very small subset of people can actually, you know, digest everything that they're being listened to within the first 30 minutes it's usually about seven to ten percent of total information that you gather you will you will only remember like seven to ten percent of it and most of the time it's like the highlight bits or the uh the big topic the big thing right and so uh there's a ton of big things when it comes to this man if anything it just allows um the foundation for so much to be built on and explored and getting your head wrapped around what are the capabilities. It, it's really hard, right? We see, we think about email as the communication source that we have it today, but email was the, be the beginning of so many more communication uh, ways that we have now, whether it's texting or discord um, or just straight messaging, you know, it's, it's hard to wrap your head around the technology and crypto has this just amazing way of, going 10 times the speed of anything else that's ever happened where you have so many build doors like yourself, uh, just putting out massive amounts of, of, of uh, just quality content in terms of what you guys are building. So yeah, no, thank you so much, Dakota. Um, I think that kind of wraps it around. We don't necessarily have anybody else coming up. So Rick, if you want to go ahead and ask your question here, I don't know how much of it we can answer, uh, you know, just to be respectful to the time, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I I've been sort of um, uh, paying attention to the RMK for for a bit of a while now. Uh, I'm I'm quite interested in the whole uh, architect that you guys are trying to build. But uh, I think the most important thing is about the ecosystem because end of the day, uh, it's the ecosystem who can make or break a, a really good infrastructure. So, um, what is the latest development? I mean, uh, is is it, uh, people start to de develop a game? Uh, is I think. Uh, uh, the NFT in game are the best use case scenario for uh, uh, RMRK. So, you, you, do you have anything that you can share? Because uh, I'm really interested in uh, RMRK, and, and also that what's the plan of uh, 
uh, cross chain to um, uh, other chains like uh, Ethereum, um, you know, those uh, um, EVN compatible chains. Yeah, so um, I'll go ahead and give a, give a quick explanation. Um, and then Dakota, you, you can feel free to dip out. Don't feel like you need to stay or anything like that. We appreciate your time, man. This has been an amazing space. Yeah, um, like, yeah that, absolutely. Uh, let me just real quick then. Uh, yeah, go for it. Follow question, Rickson, but I do. I got a team sync in a few minutes, so let me, uh, I'll hop out of here. Uh, go ahead. I'll take a breather real quick before I got my next meeting. Um, but I want to thank you all. Like, first of all, thank you for the invite. I, I love coming on the remark uh, round table space. So thank you very much. Um, but then also a huge thank you to everyone who, uh, who hopped on, uh, listened to me yamble for a little bit there. I appreciate all of you. And, uh, I like to be speaking to all y'all again here very soon. So thank you everybody. And I'll leave you to answer Rick's question. Thank you. See you buddy. Thank you so much. Thanks,